problem, sorry. I am, yes. I am a, a associate professor, uh, Dr. Yudemrod Villior. I am a, I am working at the University of uh, National University of Uzbekistan, Faculty of Chemistry. Uh, it's my uh, great uh, pleasure to uh, think as the uh, president of uh, CIA College and uh, also professor students in this college and also thank you for uh, all uh, and for uh, inviting me as a uh, invite speakers in your conference uh, uh, first uh, i need to talk about uh, your conference uh, just a little information uh, i am very interested to, to join your uh, conference uh, name it uh, let it Trends on April science, management, humanities, information technology, because uh, this conference is uh, very, very uh, interesting uh, for uh, yes. the students, yes. uh, young, the younger generation, uh, researchers, professors, in uh, because uh, there is a lattice yes. and the model in uh, trends uh, in the on the. Uh, uh, chemistry, uh, biology, uh, physics, and IT information, art, artificial intelligence, technology, and so on. Uh, so, uh, thanks for uh, all for inviting me in your conference um, today. As uh, I am uh, talk about uh, uh, the modern trends in corrosion inhibition science. Uh, uh, first, uh, I need to say. Uh, I need to say a little, little information about my university. My university is a, a national university in Uzbekistan. It is the first rank of Uzbekistan. Also, uh, it has a, it has a good uh, high ranking in uh, time science education, QS, and other education is uh, linked. For example, this is our uh, department faculty of chemistry or uh, laboratory. So I need to talk you about uh, this. Uh, why do you need this corrosion inhibitors? You know, this corrosion inhibitors is a, uh, a large problem because uh, uh, still visit still visit all the other metallic materials is. Uh, widely used it uh, in the uh, various industries such as uh, chemical industry, in, uh, oil and gas industry, petrochemical industry. Uh, but uh, uh, there is uh, some problems uh, related to uh, corrosion of metallic materials. Uh, uh, first problem is uh, uh, corrosion materials, a loss of material, natural properties uh, by uh, corrosion problem. The second one is the uh, cost. Uh, in every year uh, around the world, uh, there is a large, uh, large amount of GDP losses. For example, uh, every year, uh, every year uh, maybe 300 or uh, three, uh, three, 150 billion dollars may be lost uh, in this, uh, as a result of uh, metallic corrosion. So uh, the corrosion problems is a uh, serious problem around the world as an economical, environmental, biological, and uh, uh, technological. So in the uh, corrosion inhibitors uh, are widely used it, uh, to protect the metallic materials. Uh, to metallic materials for corrosion uh, of metallic materials. Uh, first, uh, we need to uh, know uh, gener general inhibition properties of uh, green uh, corrosion inhibitors. Uh, first, if you want to uh, doing some research in uh, corrosion inhibition science, first, uh, you need to know uh, general uh, properties, uh, general properties of corrosion inhibitors. It means uh, what the corrosion inhibitors. How can uh, you can uh, how can you improve this uh, inhibition performance of uh, organic compounds and others? The first uh, feature is the 
corrosion inhibitors uh, will need to be high thermal and chemical stability and aggressive corrosion mediums. Because uh, if uh, it is not uh, a stability, uh, it is not a useful inhibitor. The second one is the absorbent performance and efficient and uh, good uh, corrosion inhibitors. Uh, uh, be good absorbent on the nickel surface. The next one is the solubility. Uh, corrosion inhibitors need to uh, good uh, soluble, uh, good soluble uh, on the in the corrosion solution because the corrosion solution may be uh, more azotic, more alkaline, uh, more or more salinity solution solution. Then corrosion inhibitors need to be good soluble in the uh, solutions. The next one is the next one is the uh, uh, structural factors. Uh, this good uh, corrosion inhibitors uh, have a good P electron rich functional groups like amino carboxyl, hydroxyl, or nitro uh, atoms like uh, phosphorus, sulfur, oxygen, or nitrogen. The next, uh, uh, the ne next one. Uh, The next one is the P system. You know, uh, corrosion inhibitors uh, need to have uh, aromatic rings uh, because these aromatic rings have uh, P system. Is the next one? The next one is P system. Have P system chemically interacted uh, with the uh, metal superposite by sharing P electrons, uh, P electrons from metal uh, from It's ionic liquid. What's it? Ionic liquids. Ionic liquids have uh, two parts. The first one part is an ionic part. The next one is a cationic parts. So next one is a carbon dots. Carbon dots is a, is a, a large molecules in ionic liquids, uh, but the carbon dots uh, have uh, several uh, amino. And uh, carboxyl or uh, other uh, better functional groups. Uh, these functional groups uh, are mainly responsible to uh, great inhibition performance. So the next one is carbohydrates. These carbohydrates uh, also green corrosion inhibitors uh, in the modern times because uh, this carbohydrates is a low uh, cost, very cheap uh, corrosion inhibitors. The next one is a very interesting uh, material. This molecular uh, organic from workers, form, form molecular organic from workers. This compound is uh, also two parts. So the first part is metal. The next one, aromatic organic compounds. Uh, the ne well, next one is fire as medicinal drugs. Uh, no, uh, you know, uh, there is a many uh, expired drugs. Then this expired drugs and maybe good corrosion inhibitors. Uh, many scientists uh, suggest uh, expired drugs uh, to use in uh, corrosion inhibition science. Uh, the next one, plant extractors. This plant extractors also low cost because uh, this extractors we ex uh, we obtained it from um, plants. Uh, maybe plants, maybe other. Uh, very cheap uh, and low cost uh, plants, maybe. The seven is a nano components. This is nano components, uh, nano components, uh, maybe, uh, for example, carbon or nitrogen doping agents and others, or uh, carbon nanotubes, nano components, nano materials, maybe. It's also very really interesting and a green corrosion inhibitor. The next one, uh, Heterostyle compounds, heterostyle organic compounds. These compounds, uh, for example, imidazole, 
uh, imidazole, maybe uh, oxazole, and other types of heteric compounds. The next one is uh, inorganic compounds. Inorganic compounds, uh, maybe salts uh, of uh, salts and oxides of uh, some uh, metal ions. This is also uh, very interesting for inhibitors. The next one, natural polymers. Uh, natural po polymers, uh, for, for example, ketazan maybe, uh, and other polymers. These polymers also can protect metal surface by uh, forming uh, the protective and very rigid uh, uh, layer, protective layer on the metal surface. The next one is natural oils. Natural oils also very interesting materials uh, because uh, natural oils contain that uh, uh, amino, maybe proteins or uh, some uh, uh, um, oil, some oil types of compounds. Uh, this uh, inhibitors uh, may be uh, widely used in future. The next one is amino acids. Amino acids also uh, the new type of inhibitors. Uh, this uh, type of inhibitors uh, will uh, modify, modify with uh, various uh, different type of uh, Functional groups. As a result, amino acids will be more useful and these corrosion inhibitors. This is the last one, uh, phytochemicals. This phytochemicals, you know, phytochemicals uh, low cost because they are extract from uh, some uh, foods, some foods or plants, on trees, and other uh, natural products. Okay, next one is uh, uh, research methodology. Research methodology. You know, uh, uh, for example, you want to create or uh, investigate some corrosion inhibitors, then uh, you need to select the research uh, methodology. It's very important uh, because many students, uh, researchers, uh, don't know how can uh, how can doing the research. And I recommend that the first research is gravimetric analysis. Then in the, this analysis, uh, you need to find the effect of temperature, concentration, pH, emission time, and also uh, some uh, thermodynamic uh, uh, functions. For example, enthalpy, entropy, division energy, maybe you can uh, easily calculate it. The last one, uh, you need to study absorption sodiumness. Uh, after uh, using absorption of the thermos, you need to find uh, uh, other absorption thermodynamic parameters. For example, uh, absorption, entropy, enthalpy, Gibbs energy, and uh, balance uh, equivalent, balance uh, coefficient. The next one is electrochemical analysis. In this section, you will maybe use what you say, dynamic. Um, Electrochemical impedance, electrochemical noise, electrochemical thickness modulation, cyclic voltammetry, linear polarization resistance. Uh, why do you use this electrochemical analysis? Why? Because uh, because you need to um, because you need to find uh, some electrochemical kinds uh, of uh, anodic and cathodic uh, processes in the corrosion inhibition medium. The next one uh, is the next one is the surface analysis. Surface analysis maybe scanning electron microscope, atom force microscope, EDX, EDS, XPS, XED, RD, and PTR or other uh, spectroscopic uh, techniques. The last one uh, theoretical analysis. In this analysis, uh, you need to use computational chemistry. And this uh, take in this uh, V, you, uh, for example, DFT, DFTB, uh, fronted molecular orbitalis, uh, this two functional theory, FUKI, indices, optimization, molecular electrostatic potential, LUMA, HOMO, and chemical reactivity analysis. Is in uh, next part of computation analysis is molecular dynamic or Monte Carlo simulation. In this, uh, this uh, Analysis, you can find the uh, 
electrostatic interaction is on the metal surface. Okay, uh, the next one, uh, uh, this corrosion mechanism, there is two types of corrosion mechanism. The corrosion mechanism depends on uh, the solution types, metal types, temperature, uh, and uh, other conditions. The first one is uh, this corrosion, it's aqueous and corrosion. And this, uh, the metal is uh, iron, metal is iron. And this, me in this mechanism, uh, iron is uh, uh, oxidized as a result of formed uh, hydroxyl or uh, oxides in uh, sulfur. This is a large problem for on the metal surface. The next one is uh, cement corrosion. In this corrosion, you know, uh, this silver uh, also oxidizes to form uh, iron two blue plus. As a result, uh, iron hydroxyl formate. Is this also corrosion product? It's also corrosion problem. The next one I will uh, describe uh, uh, me mechanism. How can uh, uh, Corrosion filters, how can protect metal surface? In this uh, mechanism, the first, you know, first, uh, this the first is the interaction chemisorption. Chemisorption, uh, chemisorption was done by uh, transfer of B electrons to vacant B electrons of uh, metal. The next one, electrostatic interaction, is called phase distortion. In the phase distortion, in the phase distortion, uh, some nitrogen atoms uh, protonated as a nitrogen atoms will be plus uh, charged. Uh, also on the metal surface, some chloride ions absorbed on the metal surface. Uh, this ion is uh, minus charged. As a result, uh, plus charge and minus charge interacted each other. The, the next one is the P system to D electron transfer. It's re, re chemistry in this uh, mechanism, uh, the P system, some P system or P electrons uh, may be transferred to uh, on the metal surface. The last one is a, a retro donation process, retro donation process, because uh, in this mechanism, uh, some D feel this, some feel D electrons, some feel D electrons. Also, again, we transfer to uh, P system or aromatic system. P system or aromatic system. Yes. Uh, these are two, four, four types of uh, interactions on the metal on the metal surface with uh, by corrosion inhibitors. Uh, why do we use it? We have uh, fully described in this our uh, published work in the Journal of Molecular Structure. The next one is the uh, thermodynamic parameters that are in the transition state plots. These plots we use it to calculate uh, calculate the following thermodynamic parameters like activation energy, enthalpy, entropy, and difference between activation energy and enthalpy. Uh, as a result, it was found the activation energy is very uh, low on the metal surface uh, with all of the TV meter. But uh, it can uh, dramatically increase uh, with the dilatation of corrosion inhibitors. Uh, the next one is absorption diagrams. Uh, this is uh, room uh, can lay more temporary absorption the terms. This is the terms we use it to calculate the uh, absorption thermodynamic function. For example, uh, constant absorption distortion constant gives very energy uh, enthalpy entropy. This uh, values uh, can show uh, the type of inhibition of the metal surface. The next one I know is, uh, is electrochemical analysis, but it's a dynamic uh, uh, polarization or tackle coolers this one open circuit potential coolers this next one tackle plotters. The tackle plotters uh, can uh, describe uh, corrosion current density changes uh, on the, in the electrochemical processes. Uh, 
Uh, as a result, this electrochemical uh, analysis uh, following a critical parameters found, for example, uh, corrosion current density, corrosion potential, beta anodic, beta cathodic slopes, corrosion read, absorption field degree in big uh, in this distances. These parameters also can uh, describe, uh, describe the corrosion inhibitors processes on the metal surface. The next one is the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. Electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. There is a, it's a two main uh, results. The first result is Nyquist process. The second result is the phase, phase angle body plot. In the first Nyquist plot, you can uh, describe that, uh, what the corrosion uh, charge transfer transfer on the metal surface. How can, for example, and on the metal surface, how can uh, in the how can after inhibition you can easily identify it. The next one is a cyclic voltage program. These programmers can uh, uh, identify oxidation and reduction process on metal surface. The next one is the new technical and corrosion science chemical noise analysis. In this analysis chemical noise, uh, you can uh, find uh, this resistance of noise resistance. This resistance also uh, describes, uh, in this, you can find uh, uh, the chemical frequency modulation. Uh, there is this, if in speakers can uh, identify uh, what the, uh, what's happened on the metal surface. The next one is a line of polarization resistance cruise. Uh, in this cruise, also uh, identified what the uh, how can it change the resistance after inhibited or in after corroded. Cor 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 <laughs> the next one is a uh, uh, surprise analysis technical. In this technical, you can see there is a no corrosion. There is no corrosion, uh, but uh, because the corrosion inhibitor is formed protective film on the metal surface, this film is more stable. Uh, in the next analysis, ED kiss, ED kiss can uh, show the elementary mapping analysis on the metal surface. The first one uh, in the blank, in the blank solution, uh, there is a Large, well, large peaks of oxygen in uh, chloride ions, chlorine ions, because on the metal surface easily corroded. Uh, as a result, oxygen chlor chloride ions uh, may be dominant. But uh, the agitation of corrosion sweaters, uh, uh, this peaks decreased because uh, forming protective film. The next one is a density functional theory analysis. In this uh, analysis, uh, you can uh, identify uh, the correlation between uh, corrosion inhibition in molecular structures. For example, uh, the energy of LUMA and energy of HOMA can uh, show us uh, this uh, your selected corrosion inhibitor is maybe good corrosion inhibitor or not a good corrosion inhibitor. More nucleophilic or electrophilic. The next one is analyzed as very interesting analysis as a molecular, uh, molecular dynamic, molecular dynamic simulation. In this analysis, in this analysis, uh, you can uh, see this uh, electrostatic or uh, interactions on the metal surface at atomic scale. Uh, I mean, uh, because uh, organic molecules have a Many, many uh, centers, many centers. Maybe which centers is more favorable in the absorption process? Then you can identify uh, by molecular dynamic simulation. The next one is uh, as a result, uh, you can also find some uh, uh, 
factors. For example, the energy between uh, corrosion inhibitors and metal surface. This energy also uh, shows uh, corrosion inhibitors how can absorb it on the metal surface. The absorption energy is how many? How many? Maybe it's high or maybe it's lower. As a as a conclusion, uh, there are my uh, main pointers, main pointers to develop uh, corrosion keep corrosion inhibitors in the future. There is a four factor, three types of factors. This first factor is environmental. The fa first factor is environmental stimul. The next one is a, a, a different uh, inhibition functions. This last one is uh, structural factors. The first one, um, immersion time, inhibitor concentration, solution temperature, media or metal tip. When you will uh, select some corrosion inhibitors or you want to solve the uh, corrosion problems, uh, so you need to identify what's the immersion time, what's the inhibition concentration and solution temperature and uh, solution tips. The next one, uh, good corrosion inhibitors uh, have uh, good hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity or uh, good absorption orientation on the metal electrode interface. The last one, absorption contribution, because if your corrosion inhibitor is uh, not good absorbent, then uh, maybe your selected corrosion inhibitor is uh, not good. The last one is a uh, structural uh, structure parameters. For example, uh, surface hydrophobicity, aromatic rings, or p system hydrostatic rings. Uh, because if this uh, p rings or aromatic ring uh, ring is uh, more efficient, then your selected corrosion inhibitors uh, uh, would be uh, best corrosion inhibitors. The next one, alkaline chain. This alkaline chain uh, is also next factor because uh, alkaline chain also promotes the hydrophobicity, hydrophobicity of corrosion inhibitor. This last one, functional groups and or substitute effects and polymer changes in monomer effects. These factors are also very important uh, to develop corrosion inhibitors. So this is my international team, international team. Uh, we ha we ha I have worked with many, many professors around the world, uh, for example, Morocco, uh, South, Af South Africa, in Russia, in Turkey, in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in Ch China, in others, for example, also your uh, city, Professor Dakshwar Kumar Verma, also my uh, research chair. My research direction: uh, no corrosion science, protection, and electrochemistry, surface analysis, thermodynamics, organic and green synthesis, absorption science, and nanoscience, or supramolecular uh, supramolecular chemistry. If you who can uh, want to join my resource team, uh, he or she may be joined by my uh, WhatsApp address. It's uh, in here. I have a presentation. You can uh, maybe join by uh, my WhatsApp or email addresses. Uh, uh, there is my uh, key publication. We have key publications. If you interest uh, to my resource focus, maybe you will uh, find you will use my research workers. The next one, and uh, I have been in your country is India. This uh, is it Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. It's our uh, conference in DQJ College. Our my, my friend is this is as my friend. He is my friend. Is uh, Dakshwar Kumar Verma. Uh, my best friend in your country is also uh, India. It is my research team. My research team. Uh, you can, uh, if you want to join my laboratory, uh, 
you are welcome to join my laboratory. It's uh, international laboratory, our laboratory. Okay, uh, uh, thanks for all. Uh, thanks for inviting me in your conference. Uh, this con is this your conference is a very interesting. Also, congratulations on your first international conference in your psychology. In future, maybe we will cooperate. Uh, I want to cooperate with the uh, resource in your uh, psychologist. Okay, thank you for all. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. If you have a question, maybe we'll ask. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> okay, sir. Now we should start the second technical session. Now I request to our next participant, Ms. Nakansha, we should have to present her paper. Please share your slide. Yes, ma'am. May audible, ma'am? Yes. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes. No, Kansha. Is it visible, ma'am? No. A very good afternoon to all of you. My friend, and and to. Sorry, Rakansha. Sorry, Rakansha. Please start. Share your screen, Rakansha. Akansha, please share your screen. Am I ready for Akansha? Hello, Akansha? Now, next participant is Miss Shivani Patel. And the next participant is Miss Patel. Miss Shivani Patel, please share your screen. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Hello. 
Yes, ma'am. Pallavi here. Yes, ma'am. Share your screen. Yes, yes, ma'am. Wait, one minute. Okay. Uh, we know the population is day by day increasing. So the poultry industry is uh, have a, a capacity uh, to fulfill our need of uh, feed. Uh, we know all that the poultry chicken uh, are main source of animal protein available at the cheaper rates as compared to other sources of animal protein. Uh, but uh, due to use of uh, some uh, synthetic feed additives, uh, residues are present in uh, meat or chicken which is where uh, shows the negative effect on the human body. So now our research, researchers are uh, all over uh, nutritionists are researchers <laughs> are trying to find out the, some phytochemical attitudes uh, for betterment in the production. Uh, one of these are uh, neem. Neem is uh, easily available all over our, uh, which can, uh, which contain crude protein, uh, crude fiber, 14.6%, ash. Uh, the plant is good source of vitamin and minerals. Next, uh, methodology. Uh, we, uh, we took the 160-day-old broiler chicks were procured from the government uh, uh, hatcheries. And these chicks uh, were uh, randomly uh, distributed into four treatment groups, T0, T1, T2, uh, T2 T3, and uh, with 14 number of chicks in each. The chicks uh, were reared under the deep litter system up to six weeks of age. The standard management practices were provided to all the experiment birds. All the chicks were paired with the ground uh, maize, uh, ground maize uh, for a few two days. Uh, for the experiment, a pre-starter, starter, and finisher feed were used uh, during the experimental period uh, of eight weeks, uh, six weeks, sorry. The diets were implemented by required amount of neem leaf powder. Uh, here are the treatment details in which the T0 is a control which gives the we were uh, basal diet. T1, uh, basal diet plus 0.5% uh, neem leaf powder, T2 basal diet plus 1% uh, uh, neem leaf powder, one pi, uh, T3 uh, which give the basal diet uh, plus 1.5% neem leaf powder. Uh, observation was recorded, individual body weight uh, was recorded accurately at the weekly interval in morning. Results. Here, table number one showing the cumulative body weight changes of the broiler. We have seen here, uh, first two weeks, uh, there is, was no uh, change in body weight. There is a non-significant body weight changes. Uh, first uh, three weeks, sorry. After that, uh, from the three weeks, uh, body weight changes uh, linearly increased. Uh, 
at the end of the six weeks highest body weight was uh, recorded in the t2 treatment that uh, that was 19 uh, 20 20.35 Hello everyone. Am I audible now? Next participant is Mr. Naveen Kumar. Mr. Naveen Kumar. Start your presentation, sir. Hello. Sir, please start your presentation. Okay, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Myself, Naveen Kumar. Uh, I am a PhD scholar at the Department of Geography, Manars Hindu University. And uh, today we are exploring about the uh, anti cancer activity of a specific compound, cordycepin, in different cancer cells. So, what is cordycepin? It is a nucleoside analog which have uh, absence of three OH group and it is uh, derived from the Himalayan fungi and it has shown various uh, anti cancer effect in uh, different types of uh, cancer cells. And it has shown to induce apoptosis through uh, intrinsic and uh, uh, extrinsic pathway. It also inhibits DNA synthesis and uh, cause cell cycle arrest in the cancer cell. It also, uh, along with the, its uh, anti-cancer effect, it can also cause immunomodulation in the cells. Uh, so, uh, coming to methods and uh, methodology, there are around uh, 40,000 papers available on the anti-cancer effect of the uh, Codicepin. So uh, we analyzed uh, them and uh, summarized the method uh, methodology into the uh, different field. Like uh, we have uh, the uh, uh, we have categorized them like in the uh, uh, how the cell viability is evaluated, apoptosis induction, and uh, uh, what kind of signaling pathway uh, they are. Uh, uh, this drug is. Uh, changing in the different cancer cells along with the uh, different kind of uh, methods like RNA sequencing or DNA sequencing are done. So uh, in this way, we have categorized our uh, different methods. Next, what are the effects of uh, the cordycepin on the leukemia and hepatic cancer cell? So in the uh, leukemia, it uh, modulates various signaling pathway like NF-kappa beta signaling, and it also increases the rose production and reduce uh, addition and uh, upregulate P53 molecule uh, also it inhibit the telomerase and the uh, regulate the map kinase pathway inhibition next it uh, cause the hepatic cancer inhibition through nf kappa beta signaling and CR, uh, cx cr4 expression it also reduces the liver enzyme activity and inflammatory cytokines so furthermore it uh, changes the uh, adherence uh, adhesion molecules like e cadherine expression to inhibit the growth of hepatic cancer next what are its uh, cordycepin effect on the breast cancer and lung cancer in <coughs> breast cancer it uh, it inhibits its growth through multiple molecular pathway like hedgehog signaling and p53 also it trigger the g2m cell cycle arrest along with uh, it uh, uh, changes the expression of different metal protein and polymerase. Uh, in the lung cancer, it uh, causes 
to, to change the uh, AKT pathway and also VEGF which are responsible for the uh, angiogenesis in the mice or the uh, human. Furthermore, it also uh, changes multiple pathways like caspase activation and modulation of different pathways like uh, at, uh, BAX, caspase 3 which come under the uh, apoptotic, uh, apoptotic pathway in the intrinsic form. Next, uh, it changes the uh, oral brain and uh, bladder cancer. In uh, oral cancer, uh, its activity are studied in the nanoparticle form and it has shown to induce apoptosis through the intraging pathway. Furthermore, it causes the cell cycle arrest and causes uh, autophagy in the oral cancer. Next, the cordycepine caused uh, um, uh, cell proliferation and uh, differentiation inhibition in the brain cancer cell. And uh, uh, the standard drug for the brain cancer uh, 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 TMZ, uh, when this was given along with this, it uh, uh, significantly reduced the growth of cancer cell. In the bladder cancer cell, it also reduced the expression of different uh, 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 proteins and uh, uh, which were characterized through the uh, RNA sequencing and DNA sequencing. It also induces G2M H cell cycle arrest through JNK phosphorylation uh, mediated signaling. Also, it uh, uh, along with these major cancer, it have also studied uh, some studies are available uh, in which it's uh, uh, some pathway are discussed. Like it have also studied in the prostate. Car uh, thyroid cancer, testicular cancer, prostate carcinoma, melanoma, gallbladder carcinoma, and uh, glioblastoma. So, uh, this diagram explains uh, in which kind of cancer is this uh, studied. So, different color are indicating different kind of cancer, and these are the different pathways. So, overall conclusion uh, of our study showed that uh, the cordycepin can be further studied or can be developed as a drug uh, for the, its anti-cancer activity. Thank you very much. Any question? Now I request to Mr. Dushan Dari to present his paper. Mr. Dushan Dari. Ms. Shivani Patel, present present her paper. Ma'am, please start your presentation. Ms. Shivani Patel, ma'am, start your presentation. Is it visible? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Ma'am, is it visible? Yes. Presentation? Yes. Can I continue? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, today, I have to present oral presentation uh, on, on the topic of Proteus Columbi SPGPR. My name is Sivani Patel under the guidance of Dr. Chitra Pattacharya. Uh, gland growth promoting bacteria are hetero heterogeneous group of bacteria that can be found in a rhizosphere at root surfaces and association with roots and improve the extent or quality of plant growth directly or indirectly. Uh, some of the bacteria isolated from the soils, Bacillus, Proteus, uh, 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 pseudomonas, etc., uh, they can promote the plant growth. Free living bacteria that actively colonize plant growth and uh, provide positive plant development are called plant growth promoting. Uh, plant growth promoting bacteria can promote plant growth and use their own metabolism to solubilize phosphate, or produce hormones, and fix nitrogen uh, directly affect on plant metabolism. And plants have always been a symbiotic relationship with soil microbes. Uh, bacteria and fungi during their growth and development and the symbiotic free living soil microorganism inhibiting the rhizosphere of this species and have diverse beneficial effects on the host plant mm -hmm. through the mechanisms such as nitrogen fixation and nodulation are generally referred to as plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. 
these are my objectives. Uh, first is the isolation and identification of bacteria from the isospheric soil of Saurat region, India. And second is biochemical characterization of PGPR traits. And third one is study the effect of potent PGPR on groundnut plant seedlings. And fourth is statistical approach. Uh, methodology, collection of agricultural soil samples. I have to collect a total seven soil samples from different area of Saurat region and uh, uh, store in cold room for further use. Uh, isolation of PGPR, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria using nutrient agar plate and by spread bed technique. Uh, in this technique, I have to perform cereal, cereal dilution and then 0.1 ml of suspension spread on the nutrient agar plate and and incubate the plate and after the incubation, uh, different types of 72 colonies I have found and isolation of fungi using PDA and spread plate technique after the five to seven days incubation, I have to found cottony white growth and morphological characterization of rhizobacteria was done by gram staining, uh, gram negative sort roots I have found a microscopic identification of fungal pathogens, microscopic identification of fungal strains by electrophenol cotton blue stain. Uh, and the second objective is growth promotion analysis of PGPR traits. In this, uh, ammonia production was determined by using peptone nitrate growth. Uh, the 24, oh, 24 hours old grown culture inoculated in tenable peptone nitrate growth and incubated at the incubated at the 20, 24 to 72 hours and after the incubation Nestler's reagent was added and the color change of yellow to brown brown uh, that considered as a positive had positive for ammonia production hydrogen cyanide production was determined by the color change of filter paper using nutrient agar plates uh, the Bacterial culture was inoculated on nutrient agar plates, uh, nutrient agar plate and uh, supplemented with glycine and filter paper were soaked in 2% and sodium carbonate and picric acid and placed on the upper lid of, upper lid of the battery plate and, uh, and cover the paraffin with batteries and after that color change was observed after incubation, phosphorus solubilization ability of the bacteria was analyzed by using picovascular. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Sidrofa production, I have, IA production of pot culture experiment I have to done, statistical and molecular identification by 16S RNA sequencing. These are the observation, collection of soil sample, isolation of pure isolates and gram staining. Uh, isolation of pure isolates uh, and lactophenol cotton blue staining. Uh, these are the morphological characteristics of bacterial isolates in nutrient agar media. Uh, biochemical test, uh, imbic test, uh, sugar utilization, utilization test, and growth promotion analysis uh, by uh, PGPR. And these are the pot experiment and uh, root length and slope length of ground nut ratio and uh, these are the graphical representation of uh, uh, root length slope length of ground nut plant seedlings and molecular identification and discussion time is over. okay ma'am uh, this bacterial cell is biofertilizer would give the satisfactory for application in agriculture these are references thank you Any question? Now, I request to Mr. Dushyant Dave to present his paper. Mr. Dushyant Dave, are you present? Next participant is Dr. Shweta Gayakwad. Dr. Shweta Gayakwad. Ma'am, are you present? Yes, ma'am, I'm present. I'm Dr. Shweta Gaikwad. I would like to share my screen. Ma'am, start your presentation. 
Okay. Is it visible to us? Ma'am, is it visible? Should I start now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Start your presentation, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, all the dignitaries, respected teachers, dear students. Uh, I'm Dr. Shweta Gayakwad, Assistant Professor Botley at uh, Swami Sri Surupan and Saraswati Mahavidyalaya Vilay. Today, uh, my topic of presentation is a part of my research work with the title Utilization of Carbohydrates During Seed Germination in Important Cultivars, um, a Case Study of Raffinus Satellite. As we all know that seed germination is an important process in the life cycle of plants and it is initiated when the apparent uh, metabolic dormancy of desiccated seeds is interrupted by imbibition. It leads to extensive breakdown of stored or reserved carbohydrates, fats, proteins, etc., which is further utilized or you can say which provide energy for the uh, development of the embryo and other nutritional, um, other nutritional requirements for the growth of the seedlings. So coming to the introductory part of my presentation, I would like to mention that seed germination is a very crucial stage, uh, which is considered as a determinant for plant productivity. The major storage materials in most of the seeds uh, are generally carbohydrates, proteins, and liquids. So placy cotyledons serve the major storage organs in the seeds and carbohydrates as the major food reserves. Food reserve uh, is broken down by the formation of various types of hydrolases, like amylases, nucleases, glycases, proteases, etc. In plant, alpha amylase plays the key role to uh, convert starch into sugar, where starch degradation is a very important event in seed germination. So starch hydrolysis by amylases converted to metabolizable sugars, which provide the energy for growth of roots and shoots during seed germination. Talking about the plant material I have considered for this part of my research work, it is a plant material called radish in English with a botanical name Raffanus sativus, which belongs to the family Brassicaceae and locally uh, known as Mooli. It is an annual or biennial shrub, very familiar vegetable, uh, where the fleshy tap root is used raw or cooked. The green leaves are also edible. It is cultivated throughout India and worldwide. These are rich in antioxidants and minerals like calcium and potassium. It is also useful in the treatment of high blood pressure, heart diseases, and rheumatism. Coming to the methodology, we have uh, taken healthy reddish sheets of uniform size and vigor and uh, uh, being sterilized and imbibed in normal tap water for 24 hours. Carbohydrate utilization was observed by extracting and estimating the starch and sugar content of the cotyledons only, and the amylase activity was also recorded for further analysis. As uh, Raffanus satire show epigeal germination, uh, I have uh, divided the whole process of the epigeal germination into six most important intermediate phases, that is I, uh, phase of imbibition, R, phase of radical expansion, H, phase of hypocotyl extension, B, phase of dancing and radical, E, phase of epicotyl extension, and L is the final phase that is unfolding of first leaves. So estimation of starch and sugar is, uh, was done uh, by using an present method, whereas uh, a mileage activity uh, was estimated by using DNS method. You can see in this time. Okay, ma'am. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Any question? Now I request to Ms. P.D. Sahu to present her paper. Yes, ma'am. I'm present here. Good afternoon, all respected professors, teachers, scholars present in this conference. I would like to introduce myself. 
Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes. So, I'm glad to be here with you all today. Now, I'm going to start my paper presentation. The topic of my presentation is Geomorphology of Arpa River Basin, a remote sensing based preliminary analysis. I'm doing my PhD research under Dr. Ratne Shivai, sir, doctor uh, from Professor. Dr. C. V. Raman University, Kota, Bilaspur. These are the table of contents I'm going to present you. The introduction, why I have chosen this topic, because being a resident of Bilaspur, I can face some problem related to scarcity of water, which is due to mainly land and water erosion, which is, uh, which is going day by day. My study area is Arpa River of land having 148 kilometers with a catchment of 2022 kilo square kilometer in which i am taking a smallest uh, small one the, that is sarangi nala i see of catchment of arpa river with the overall area of catchment 366 hectare for this the manual process which we already chosen is very hectic so i have chosen a remote Sensing based tech. Now, remote sensing will measure watershed and their beneficial needs. Drainage line treatment to increase the recharge potential of the that land. Analyze the hydrology of the Nala. My limitation is uh, Arpa River tributary catchment area. Uh, the main objective of my study is finding a better and more accurate solution for the beneficiaries and life based on study area that is Sarangi Nala. The methodology I'm going to use is, uh, I have already told that is remote sensing in which I'm using GIS technique. GIS means Geographic Information System, which is satellite from which uh, we can get the maps of satellite based sensors. Uh, ArcGIS is one of the uh, software. Time is over. Yes, ma'am, I'm going to result. These are the results, the pictures of my soil collection. Uh, these are the uh, reports of soil test. Uh, we can see that uh, the soil type are sandy, loamy, and pH is nearly acidic and basic. The map, this shows that vegetation, where can be uh, vegetation map. These are the uh, area where very dense forest, moderate forest, or open forest are found. And these are the... Okay, ma'am. These are the conclusion, acknowledgement, references. Thank you. Thank you, Priti. Now I request to Ms. Mehna Arya, present of your paper. Uh, yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, Mehna. Okay, ma'am. Please start. Ma'am, is my uh, presentation visible? Yes, I know. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Today, I'm here to present my work on the optimization of thermoalkali stable cellulase production, which is isolated from Tapovan hot spring situated in Uttarakhand. So, uh, I would like to tell you about the cellulase enzyme. We know that cellulase, uh, the it's mainly responsible for the degradation of cellulose. And basically, it has got three types of enzymes, that is exoglucanase, endoglucanase, and cellobiolase. They all three enzymes, they act um, simultaneously. And uh, also, it also involves the reaction uh, of hydrolysis of beta 1,4 glycosidic linkage. And here, I have optimized the conditions uh, by using certain parameters, that is media optimization, carbon source, nitrogen source, pH, temperature, size, inoculum, and incubation time. So here I have used two strategies, that is one variable at a time. 
and placket Berman. So one variable at a time means I want to optimize with various factors. So uh, I have used the certain parameters and studied the one variable at a time. And experiment where I have used the selection of media, I have used the different kinds of media and incubated for 50 uh, at 50 degree for 24 hours. And these, as you can see, uh, these are the six different media out of which I got the highest activity in media five. Then I studied the effect of different carbon sources, different nitrogen sources. And then I studied the effect of different temperature, effect of pH, pH was range from four to 12. Then I studied size inoculum starting from 2%, 4%, 6 and 2, 12. Then I studied incubation time. Incubation time was given for about zero hour to 60 hours. Apart from studying the placket bomb, uh, sorry, one variable at a time, I use this experimental design to be more sure that which factors are significantly important. So where I took seven factors out of which I got only two uh, factors responsible for the better activity. So these are the factors, as you can see here, this experimental design. And after that, uh, here are the results. You can see here that the maximum activity I got in media five and the maximum nitrogen source production was seen in yeast extract, whereas in effect of carbon source was in glucose. Uh, similarly, the maximum activity was shown on pH 8. And next, you can see here that the size inoculum was, uh, I used 6%, which showed the highest activity. Similarly, yes. for different temperature, 50 degree was uh, uh, the uh, optimum temperature. So, here is a packet permanent result where you can see that this is significant is showing this tends to show that temperature is an optimum factor. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Megna. Thank you. Now I am amazed to Ms. Jyoti Rani present her paper. Good afternoon. Ms. Jyoti Rani. Yes, ma'am. And PPT is visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jyoti Rani. And I am presentation on. Jyoti, please share your screen. Yes, ma'am. Share my screen. Start. Jyoti, share visible ho hai? Yes. Now. Abhi ho raha hai, Share screen. Next presentator is Ms. Pundati Pavish by Yagmi. Please be prepared. Okay, ma'am. Jyoti Rani, please be continued. Ma'am, visible? Okay. Ah, uh, my name is Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jyoti Rani, and I am presentation on synopsis and anti convergent evaluation of some novel oxygen derivatives present uh, under the present of Ram, Ms. Ramya Parveen and Ms. Dr. Vishali Singh from SD College of Pharmacy Vocational School. Ah, <laughs> Introduction important in methodology of uh, research work, synthetic scheme, and result and discussion. Now, about talcum, first of introduction. Introduction chemist <clears throat> the chemistry of oxygen become an important branch of retrocyclic compound, not just on a synthetic intermediates, but also due to the wide spectrum application of this type of compound in these medicines. Oxygens are six membered heterocyclic compound containing one nitrogen atom and one oxygen atom and two double bond. Oxygen derivatives are important heterocyclic compound with several biological activities. 
ठीक है नंबरिंग ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज फॉलोड अकॉर्डिंग टू आईपीएसटी सिस्टम इन विच ऑक्सीजन इज नंबर फर्स्ट एंड देन नाइट्रोजन ओके ऑक्सीजन आर हेट्रोसाइकिल कंपाउंड कंटेनिंग वन नाइट्रोजन एंड वन ऑक्सीजन वन ऑक्सीजन ऑक्सीजन देयर आर थ्री आइसोमर एग्जिट डिपेंड ऑन द रिलेटिव पोजीशन ऑफ द हेट्रो एटम्स एंड रिलेटिव पोजीशन ऑफ द डबल बॉन्ड ऑक्सीजन हेट्रोसाइकिल हैव स्पेशल इंटरेस्ट बिकॉज़ दे कंस्टिट्यूट एन इंपॉर्टेंट साइक इंपॉर्टेंट क्लास ऑफ नेचुरल एंड नॉन नेचुरल प्रोडक्ट देन इज द इट इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन uh one two oxygen one three oxygen and one four oxygen now as the physical property of the oxygen oxygen other name one two oxygens and the chemical formula molecular mass is uh, 3 2 4 moles density is one boiling point is uh, one to four i'm uh, sorry one two one zero four hydrogen bond donor count count zero hydrogen bond except count is three and color is the light and dark yellow is the uh, ye this is the picture of oxygen and it is the important uh, anti uh, pharmacological activity that is anti microbial activity anti platelet activity anti tubular activity anti oxidant activity anti cancer also activity etc activity and aim and object aim and object it is to carry out the design of no new molecule synthesis synthesis of the compound to perform the following parameters of the synthesized compound melting point raised okay ma'am ma'am synthetic scheme is mouse sir bhai Thank you, Jyoti. Now I request to Miss Bhavesh Bhai Yamit. Yes, ma'am. Bhavesh, start your presentation. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, is it visible? My screen is visible. No, ma'am. No. Okay, ma'am. Just this thing. Ma'am, is it visible now? No. Share. Please share this. Yes, ma'am. I'm currently sharing, but. Uh... Is it visible, ma'am? Now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so i'm unati yakni okay thank you ma'am so my today i'm uh, presenting a poster on title as identification of low density polyethylene degrading actinomycetes from the soil of rajkot region gujarat so Uh, as we all know that plastic is the universal problem so it is omnipresent in the environment and so uh, i have chosen low density polyethylene specifically because it is the most uh, uh, used type of plastic which is used in packaging material so polluted areas like dumping sites and uh, uh, several other areas containing several microbiota which are able to degrade the plastic so i have chosen specifically actinomycetes uh, in my research i have gone through such material method first i have uh, chosen three different sites from the Rajkot region to collect the soil samples uh, from the awesome. dumping site. Then further, I have isolated actinomycetes from the particular areas. Further, uh, in primary screening, I go through the uh, MSM using MSM medium. And secondary screening, I use MSM medium as a growth yes. and check uh, check the growth of bacteria by adding one percent of LDP powder. In a clear zone assay, I have, I have chosen PG agar assay as a medium for identify the clear zone. And further, weight loss weight loss determination of the particular plastic beads. So these are my results uh, here. here you can see that uh, this two graph are representing the growth of individual bacteria at 600 nanometer which is showing that uh, four iso out of this 10 isolates for uh, total 10 isolates are able to grow on msm medium containing plastic as a sole carbon source so further i have taken the 10 samples for the clear zone assay and i have found that 
four sample PUM 17, PUM 18, 22, and 13 were able to uh, uh, create a clear zone on the plastic containing agar medium. So this is the LDP degradation rate chart, which is suggesting that particular bacteria, I have put this bacteria into for one month incubation with the particular plastic beads, the LDP beads, and I have found that uh, this uh, out of this whole bacteria, PUM 17 is able to degrade the plastic or cause the weight loss into the particular plastic beads. So these are the particular results of my uh, topic. And uh, here I have concluded that the soil of dumping sites are harboring the plastic degrading actinomycetes. Uh, they are able to degrade plastic. And there are four numbers of uh, isolates that are able to degrade plastic beads. Maximum is 7% by PUM17 and minimum is 1% by PUM20. In future respect, we can go through 16S sequencing for identification of uh, individual species and genus. And further metabolic study can go, uh, lead us to the identification of potent enzyme and genomic studies can lead us to the identification of particular gene, which are important in plastic degradation. So thank you, yes. And I would like to thank Sci College for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Now I request to Dr. Virendra to present his paper. Dr. Virendra Webb. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, my screen is visible? No, ma'am. Uh, okay. Please share your screen, ma'am. Ma'am, I have already shared it. Uh, please wait. Ma'am, now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. A very good afternoon to all the dignitaries, research scholars, and dear students. My name is Dr. Varinda Vek, and I am Assistant Professor in Gurukul Kangri Haripur. So today I am presenting a review-based topic on uh, how medicinal herbs used in yagna and how they can be a solution to many problems. As we already know that India is a traditional uh, treasure of traditional knowledge that has been transferred from generation to gen generation. Or we have seen our old times that we are doing what we are doing in our past and we are doing what we are doing in our body and we are doing what we are doing in our surroundings. I am not taking more time. My focus will be on some medicinal herbs, plants, trees and their parts which we are using in our past. और उनके क्या क्या प्रॉपर्टीज रहती है फॉर एग्जांपल यहाँ पे कुछ मैंने प्लांट्स मेंशन uh, किए हैं लाइक like मैं अगर बात करूं देर आर सेफरन और कोकोनट सेम सीड्स एंड वी हैव क्लो जावित्री एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम अगर मैं वुड की बात करूं तो वी हैव मैंगो एंड अगार अगार वुड पीपल बेल पत्र और uh, अगर मैं फोकस करूं यहाँ पे सिर्फ मैंगो वुड के लिए तो यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट मैंगो वुड को जो है आम की लकड़ी को यज्ञ में बहुत ज्यादा पवित्र माना जाता है और आप साइंटिफिक रीजन इज दैट कि जब आम की लकड़ी को जलाया जाता है उसके जलाने पर कुछ कंपाउंड रिलीज होता है दैट इज फॉर्मिक एसिड और फॉर्मल डिहाइड विच एक्ट एज अ पोटेंट इंसेक्टिसाइड कंपाउंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम मैंगो वुड देर इज इलायची तुलसी सिनामन एलोवेरा नीम चंदन एजवाइन एंड लोबन एंड वट हैपन्स देयर जब हम अलोन में अलोन नहीं बोलूंगी कि एक सिंगल प्लांट ये सब करने में सक्षम है बट इन कॉम्बिनेशन और हम देखते हैं वेन द मेडिशनल हर्ब एंड प्लांट्स बर्न इन डिफरेंट कॉम्बिनेशन दे रिलीज सम वेपराइज प्रोडक्ट्स which when diffused into the atmosphere and exposed to the sunlight, they continue the phytochemical reactions resulting into the oxidation and reduction reactions. Iske alawa, uh, maine yaha, ye review based kaam hai. So, I have a NBRI Lucknow Dwara a uh, research paper hai, usko main yaha pe as a reference rakh rahi hun. Ki yaha pe dekhe kya hua hai, ki unka ek experiment tha, ki unhone kya kya tha, 1.5 kg of मैंगो वुड को बंद किया था इन अ क्लोज रूम एंड दे फाउंड आउट दैट इवन आफ्टर थर्टी डेज दिस इज द प्री एंड पोस्ट यज्ञ सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ बैक्टीरियल काउंट कि दैट इवन आफ्टर थर्टी डेज जो आपका जो इन्फेक्शियस बैक्टीरियल जो काउंट था इट वाज क्वाइट लो एस कंपेयर टू द फर्स्ट डे एंड Oh, okay, ma'am. Uh, so this is a review-based presentation, uh, and th I would like to thank Sci College for giving us such opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request to Mr. Anna Jyoti Dev Sharma to present her paper. Mr. Anna Jyoti Dev Sharma. 
Are you present, Anna Jodi? Now, next participant is Miss Motrai Devi and Mr. Shishir Subandas. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Yes, sir. Present, Hello, uh, ma'am. Sir, share this screen. Okay. okay. Hello? Ma'am, can you see? Yes, Hello? yes, I start your presentation. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. My name is Sisir Suman Das and I'm from Assam Dalton University. So today I'm going to present isolation and biochemical characterization of bacteria present in fermented bamboo soup uh, and please share your screen. Sorry, ma'am. Please share your screen, sir. Skin. Is yeah, ma'am, I'm sharing. Sorry? Please share your screen, sir. So, yeah, I'm sir, sharing. Presentation is starting with the screen sharing. Okay, ma'am, I'm sharing. Can you see the screen, ma'am? No, sir. I'm sharing. The video file is open. Sir, open the file for video file. Now, ma'am, can you see the share? Hello. Hello. Sir, screen share the file. हाँ हाँ जी हाँ जी मैंने तो शेयर कर दिया हाँ लेकिन सर स्टार्ट कीजिए मिस्टर शिशी स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन शिशी ओके मैम आई एम शेयरिंग प्लीज कैन यू चेक वंस now, can you see see my slide? No. Hello. Sister, start your presentation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Sister Suman Das, and today I'm. Uh, I'm going to present uh, this topic, isolation and biochemical characterization of bacteria present in the fermented bamboo soup. So uh, we know that Assam is a region with a rich cultural diversity and ethnic groups. And its ethnic groups has its own method of fermenting food materials for the purpose of preservation, taste, nutritional enhancement, and has been carrying this traditional from time immemorial. So uh, in this study, we have selected two types of fermented foods such as uh, like uh, uh, bamboo soot and uh, gundruk. So uh, we know the, what is the fermentation? Actually fermentation, it is, uh, it's a ma metabolic process by which organic molecules are converted into acids, gases, or alcohol in the absence of oxygen or electron transport chain. So uh, in this study, uh, so this is my objectives of the study. First, uh, we collect the sample. After that collection of sample, we isolated the bacteria. After, the, after isolating the bacteria, we performed the biochemical test and the microscopic uh, analysis for identification and uh, for, for the identification. So this is my review and literature part. And the, my uh, methods are like, uh, First, we collected the sample. We collected the uh, sample like the uh, gumdruk and the bamboo suit. After collecting the sample, we uh, performed, uh, sorry, uh, we isolated the sample, isolated the bacteria from the fermented product. And for the, uh, for the identification of the isolated sample, we performed the biochemical test and the uh, microscopic analysis of the isolates. So here, Figure uh, one here, uh, these are the bacterial isolated colonies. 
of the fermented bamboo shoots and this table is Thank you, Shishi. Thank you. Now I request to Ms. Ankita Subhagya. Ms. Ankita Subhagya, are you busy? Next participant is Dr. Kunjan Srivastava. Dr. Kunjan Srivastava, are you present? Next candidate is Ms. Dipti Dhosia. Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm present. Okay, Ms. Dipti, start your presentation. Okay, okay, ma'am. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Dipti Dusia. I'm presenting a review paper, a brief view about the COVID-19 risk. Ma'am, I'm sharing. Shishir, Abna, aap give that to say. Mr. Shishir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. So, my name is Dipti. I'm presenting this paper, a brief view about the COVID-19 with, with respect to its structure, genome pathogenesis, possible therapy, vaccine, and strategy. As we know that... As we note that in the last three years, we uh, whole world has faced the COVID-19 tragedy, and uh, it was uh, assumed that it is spread from the Wuhan. A city in the provinces of China. The most early present was already two strains of uh, SARS CoV is present. SARS CoV 2 is present. One is was detected in 2002 and another was detected in 2012. And they were namely as the SARS CoV and MERS CoV. So, what is the scenario? The scenario was that the uh, it was assumed that COVID 19. COVID-19 is a zootonic uh, origin. Second phase transmission is started in the hospitals after 13 January. And as the transmission was very high, it uh, the first case uh, outside the China was reported in Thailand in 2020, 13 January. Then third transmission was uh, after that, uh, 26 January. Then this is the map which represents the uh, spread of the COVID-19. Then what is the genomic re uh, resemblance? It was uh, after sequencing, it was found that the S glycoprotein and RBD uh, domain was resembled to the SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV, which were uh, reported in 2002 and 2013. And it was reported that NSP2 and NSP3 mutation was the responsible for high uh, level of differentiation and uh, infectious rate. And uh, the SARS-CoV-2 is a single strand positive RNA virus, and it is mainly five uh, mutations which are mentioned here. The main mutation is in the spike uh, glycoprotein, which uh, results in the high uh, infectious rate. The mutation D61AG is responsible in S1, S2 junction, which is, which is responsible for purine recognition during the transmission. So the phenotype, as we know that coronavirus resembles the coron solace-like appearance. That's why its name is coronavirus. And it's a positive strain virus. It mainly have uh, two open reading frames and many peptide, uh, pepin-like cysteine protease enzymes, which help in the cleavage and uh, further translation and transcription. This is the uh, structure of the coronavirus, as all we know, namely. And uh, the main uh, uh, act of the infection is during S1, S2 bridge. When it is cleaved during the fury uh, by the purine enzymes, then uh, S1 domain is responsible for the top 
a structural chain and S2 is responsible for the uh, uh, AC2 binding and many binding and protein transmembrane like okay okay thank you thank you Dipti. Okay. now I request to Mr. Anshu Parivar Mr. Anshu Parihar. Next presenter is Ms. Asha Kumari. Are you present, Ms. Asha Kumari? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, start your presentation. Everyone, my name is Asha Kumari, and my topic is high throughput by prospecting of ornamental in wheat plants for stereoselective hydroxynitrolyse. Hydroxynitrolyse or oxynitrolyse is an enzyme which is uh, widely available. This uh, enzyme is produced when pathogen attack to the uh, plant, and then uh, hydrocyanic acid is released. The plant produces cyanogenic glycosides like uh, amygdalin and pinacin as a natural plant uh, extract and then store them in different tissue on tissue disruption is initiated and electrocytes mediated cleavage of cyanogenic glycosides and later this nitrilized into hydro hydrocyanic acid and this uh, hydroxynitrolyse is um, therapeutic uh, uh, agricultural purposes like uh, as an anti cancer agent, uh, pheromones for pest management, and cardiac drugs like dino, uh, de uh, dinopamide. It is also used uh, as chiral uh, uh, ferrocin, and this compound is, uh, uh, is like ketocyanohydrins are used as a, uh, in the production of oil fins and the linear alpha oil fins, which have uh, been also produced by uh, this H um, hydroxynitrolyse. So, this uh, uh, whole research is based on the uh, purpose of uh, finding new sources of hydroxynitrolyse. The samples were collected from the uh, Babasar Bhimra Bitkar University and the areas are adjacent to them. These are the which has been uh, tested for the prospecting. These are total in uh, 52 in number. I put this the finger activity produced uh, on a twin, uh, means uh, uh, tetra base for for methanol base uh, two types of binds and produce that is quinoidic acid and carbonic acid. Presence of uh, um, hyd uh, hydrogen acetic acid uh, produces blue color, which uh, gives us the um, presence of uh, cyanide. In this process, uh, a solution of ethylene acetoacetate and uh, methylene 4 for methylene bis is made in equal quantity and mixed. And then the filtered paper discs are being picked and dried so that these uh, papers can be directly used for the purpose of identifying uh, the presence of uh, hydrocyanic. Yes, in which the leaves are cut and then they are placed in a refrigerator for overnight and then they are at room temperature it is and the plant produces the uh, sign and I do say the result is shown by the people. Your time is over Ms. Asha. Ms. Asha, your time is over. Uh, uh, okay, ma'am, but I want to uh, share the result in this bio prospecting there is one plant called calendula officinalis which shows the activity and thank you ma'am thank you Ms. Asha. next presenter is mr Ashish Kumar Ashish Kumar please present your presentation
मिस्टर अभिषेक मिस्टर अभिषेक म्यूट करके रखो इसको मैं आप मिस्टर अभिषेक आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है visible yes sir let's start uh, my topic is effect of different type of botanical based formulation on leaf galls disease of halostonia scoleris then uh, then contents these are contents introduction aims and objective of research methodology which we are going uh, disease observed selection of test plant field trials observation result and conclusion first we are discuss with introduction then galls are any deviation in the normal pattern as we know plant have uh, many types of disease and galls are one of them so the, uh, there are different types of galls found in plants these are stem gall leaf galls and uh, root galls and the causal organism basically are bacteria fungi nematode mites or insect there are two main characters of gall uh, galls are hypertrophy and uh, hyperplasy which are self proliferation and uh, overgrowth of cell uh, overgrowth of tissues in plants uh, what are the effect of on host plants so these are plant suffers loss of substances deviation in the direction of growth disturbance in sap flow and uh, premature decays are also found in the uh, plants uh, increase of non essential parts and the cost at the cost of essentials and other injuries are also uh found in diseased plants these uh, this is the present work uh, present mai maine jo kiya hai wo hai host plants mein maine elastonia scolars jisko hum saptaparni bhi kehte hain usko liya hai uh, pathogens are porosella tuberculata which causes leaf galls and uh, the galls are oval to ellipsoidal solid hards rough dark and persistence observed at upper surface of leaf and also young and mature leaves are also affected with uh, uh, with an increase of galls in number leaves appear crumbled and completely deformed and uh, iske liye jo humne extraction taiyar kiya hai to uske liye usko maine terms diya hai test plants and test plants mein hum anona squamosa elevisia labeck lantana camara pongemia pinnata eucalyptus globulus or limonia acd sima ko maine As a test plant, select किया है. These are aims and objective of research. So these are identifications of disease plants, types of disease, pathological identifications, selection of test plants, and to detect mitocidal property of plant extracts against pathogen of Elastolia scoleris plants grown in nursery. Basically, ये जो काम है मैंने nurseries में किया है. और in vivo conditions में मैंने उसको ट्रीट किया है तो देन टू कंपेयर माइट्स रेजिस्टेंस कैपेबिलिटी ऑफ सिलेक्टेड प्लांट एक्सट्रैक्ट लिस्टिंग ऑफ प्लांट्स हैविंग माइटी साइडल प्रॉपर्टीज 
these are uh, uh, some uh, pictures which are shown matures and uh, uh, young leaves are also infected with gall's disease uh, uh, jisme aap uh, uh, jo pathogens hai wo bhi aap dekh sakte hain poropsila tuberculata aur ye seedlings ko bahut affect karta hai mainly then uh, isliye jo humne sare treatment diye hain wo seedlings ke liye hi diye this and this is the list of test plants जिसमें एनोना स्कोमोसा में हमने लीव्स और सीड्स दोनों को ट्राई किया है लेंटाना कैमरा जिसमें लीव्स एलबीजियल एवेक्स में सेलेक्ट किया है लीव्स को लिमोनिया एसिडीसीमा जिसमें लीव्स और पोंगेमिया पिनाटा में सीड्स एंड यूकेलिप्स में लीव्स एक्सट्रैक्ट बनाया है दिस इज द आउटलाइन ऑफ मैथोडोलॉजी एंड इसमें जो डिस सबसे पहले फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग विद दिस इज ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड आइडेंटिफिकेशन देन कलेक्शन ऑफ टेस्ट प्लांट then uh, collection, after collection we are going with the processing of plant part extraction of plant part then mix extract with mix extract with what hello time is over sir okay 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 thank you thank you sir next participant is miss aarti priyadarshini miss aarti priyadarshini are you present पार्टिसिपेंट्स जिनका प्रेजेंटेशन हो चुका है लीव कर सकते हैं बाकी को मिस आरती प्रियदर्शी आर यू प्रेजेंट हेलो 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 मिस आरती प्रियदर्शी हेलो यस मैम स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून मैम शेयर यू स्क्रीन मैम जस्ट डूइंग नेक्स्ट प्रेजेंटेटर इज मिस कविता कुमारी मैम प्लीज बी प्रिपेयर माय प्रेजेंटेशन इज विजिबल नो मैम माय प्रेजेंटेशन इज विजिबल नो मैम हेलो नो मैम आपको मेरी आवाज आ रही है मैम मिस आरती प्रेजेंटेशन यस मैम आपका स्क्रीन शेयर नहीं हुआ मैम my topic is regulatory roles of fcmv mirnas on proapoptotic genes so here here's my introduction uh, what happens is the uh, fcmv mirnas these uh, what they did is ki they enters a body and they 
for example, neuronal cells, fibroblasts, endothelial, epithelial. So, uh, what uh, what I have proposed is my hypothesis is given this micro RNA of proliferative gene and it uh, so further uh, what I did was my here is my object proliferative genes by the use of various genes. this is the methodology that I I, I have uh, procured my these are the tools that I have used for uh, uh, procuring three prime UTR of particular MRI uh, for example UTR DV database and genome uh, genome UCSC browser. And this is a mirror database from where I have uh, procured the HCMV miRNA. Further, I validated uh, my result through the uh, uh, RNA hybrid prediction, and the second one is the RNA22 uh, prediction tool. So these are my results. The first one, uh, these results are based on particularly the MFE value and the GU pairing as well as the seed sequence. So the best hit that I found was, first of all, the IRF1 gene, whose MFE value was minus 40.1. And the second was uh, Puma gene, whose uh, MFE value was minus 37.2. And further, uh, the Puma gene, uh, its MFE value was minus 37.4. And this one, is, this one was the BAT1 gene, whose MFE value was 34.4. But among um, all these results, uh, what I have, uh, what which gene I have selected was the Puma gene, whose uh, MFA value was minus 37.2, and which shows the best hit with the HCMV Miruel 148D. Further, I uh, validated my in silico studies with in vitro studies. For that, I did the dose optimization with the amplity assay, and this uh, this uh, dose optimization was already mentioned in the Mahani et al. paper 2012. Uh, further, I did confocal microscopy in which I I put up a, a setup of a setup of four uh, groups. Uh, in the first group, I put the negative control in which uh, uh, I. I took my cells, uh, the, the cell model was HEK293 cells, and the cells were untreated, they were not treated with any sort of drugs, uh, any sort of drug, and the second was the positive control in which I treated my cells with a doxorubicin, uh, that is 0.5 molar concent micromolar concentration, in which I found was, uh, the there was a nuclear fragmentation, as we can, as I have marked with the arrows, and the third one uh, was the, uh, and the third one in which I treated my cells with a uh, drug that is doxorubicin as well as I transected my cells with the Meruel 148D uh, in which, uh, the, down, uh, in which uh, the apoptosis process was found to be very low as there was nuclear, nuclear fragmentation. Time is over. Time is over. Thank you, ma'am. Next presenter is Next presenter is Kavita Mori. Thank you, ma'am. Next is Miss Shikha Mori Bora. Shikha Mori Bora, are you present? Yes, ma'am. Start your presentation, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Hello. Ma'am, please share your screen. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Start your presentation, ma'am. Ma'am, there is some problem in my presentation. Uh, can I?
can I reschedule my presentation uh, for? Then uh, start your presentation. Next presentation presenter is Mr. Nirmal Singh. 